Okay, so I just finished watching the uh, OpenAI Developer Day, and uh, or at least the keynote speech, and I'm not going to comment on a lot of the specifics, um, but there's a couple things that I will comment on. So first and foremost, they're baking in a lot of uh, memory and other tool use and other things into the agent. So the the core model, the GPT model, is getting all kinds of additional things kind of bolted on. Uh, partly in terms of the capabilities of the language model, but also in the wrapper around it. And so this is an analogy that I've said for a long time, that creating AGI is not just creating the engine, because the GPT model by itself is like the engine of a car. You need the rest of the car <laughs> in order to get AGI. So that's what we're seeing happening in real time. They're adding more and more tools and more structure around the core model. And so one of the first things that they're adding is better memory, the ability to instantiate agents uh, on the fly, and more tools. And so these are the kinds of things that people like I and others who are working on cognitive architectures have been doing for quite a while, where it's you need memory systems, you need communication systems, and all this other fun stuff. So for instance, the JSON feature that they're adding is going to allow you to ensure that the communication from one model to another API is always going to be in the correct JSON format without having to do any extra steps, which is really nice, really handy. Uh, now, one thing that I was personally listening for is autonomy. And so he, Sam Altman did say like, we're making it easier to create more agents and the agents are gonna be more capable. And soon the agents are gonna be able to, to do more planning and make more decisions on their own without your input. So he basically alluded to autonomy without saying the word autonomy because that would spook a lot of people. Uh, but then at the very end of the keynote speech, he said that, you know, he basically told us the roadmap. The roadmap that OpenAI wants to create is they're getting the world ready for more agents, to get used to the idea of having human-directed agents. And I don't remember who I was talking to. I think it was a Patreon supporter. But they said that, uh, or maybe it was someone from the ACE framework team, but they said that, like, it makes sense to go this way because nobody knows how to even use agents yet, let alone deploy fully autonomous agents. And I realized that uh, in hindsight, because I had a client ask me once, hey, you know, you're doing all this work on cognitive architecture, let's deploy autonomous agents. And I said, are you using generative AI at all yet in your company? And they said, no. I said, you're not ready to deploy fully autonomous agents. And I was like, and also you're not gonna be able to find anyone who knows how to deploy them because this is a brand new discipline. We are still actively researching how to create autonomous agents. So I've got a video coming out in a week or two uh, talking about one of the ways to steer these things. Um, so I think you'll be really excited about that. Uh, I had uh, conversations with uh, a couple philosophers and a couple people from the ACE framework team about this new paradigm that's coming. Uh, so I'm really excited to announce that, but I, I have a lot of work to do um, in terms of testing it. But the initial test looked really good, so stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, so I have been critical of OpenAI and Sam Altman. What they say is often agreeable, but then what they do and their incentives often leave me with some questions. Uh, so time will tell. Uh, but one other thing that I wanted to point out uh, from a business perspective is I have had many, many people ask me, like, how do we overcome the limitation of the model today? And I said, just wait, literally just wait six months. Because having started back in the age of GPT-3, you know, where we had GPT-3 for just like a year and a half before we had any movement. So, but, you know, the the window, the token window size started at 1,000, went up to 2,000, went up to 4,000. That was a year ago. A year ago today, we still had only 4,000 tokens. Now we have 128,000 tokens. Uh, that's what exponential growth looks like. But also beyond that, so here's an example. I had a prospective client say, Dave, I really want your help overcoming the token window limits. And I said, no, that's a waste of time. I said, you're going you're gonna to waste days, weeks, or even months trying to overcome the limitations of the model today. And um, then all the work that you're going to do is going to be completely invalidated by the next iteration that comes out. And what everyone just saw in real time is what I have seen over the last four years. Um, and so like basically the rule of thumb that I recommend to everyone is if you find a limit for the model, that is just a limit for the model. It might not be smart enough to overcome what you're trying to do. The, the window count might not be big enough or whatever. So once you find these new limits, the limit is the limit. 
Um, but yeah, so this is a huge step towards AGI and towards autonomy. I've had a lot of people message me on LinkedIn and other places like, so have you updated your, your estimate for AGI yet? And I'm like, it, it's all confirmed. I honestly think that my my estimate for AGI, which is sept right now it's September 2024, uh, I think is probably too conservative um, because basically what Sam Altman just said is, hey, we want to get the world ready for semi-autonomous agents. And the next stage is, guess what? Human level autonomous agents that can make decisions. And, and I mean, they're already superhuman in a lot of ways. Like, you know, you hop on over to Claude or whatever that can read an entire book in 30 seconds. Um, and then can produce useful output on that. As we get better at making these agents that can do planning and execution and testing and iteration and cycles, it's basically game over, right? So a lot of you in my audience seem to uh, believe and agree that like we're heading towards post labor economics or you know some kind of job apocalypse where most jobs are going away. I, I've had a lot of conversations with people where it's like, you know, we can we can squint really hard and try and imagine that, you know, yeah, jobs are going to stay. And, but again, it's normalcy bias. I've talked about this before, but then like when you take a big step back and look at it in terms of first principles, this is the, this is the four criteria I talk about better, faster, cheaper, safer. When AI and machines and robots are better, faster, cheaper, and safer than a human at a given job, the human job goes away forever. Now, will that create enough abundance to, to say like, oh, well, now that the machine can do the same thing as a human for a hundred times less, uh, you know, cost, is that going to, is that going to create a, an abundance of wealth and demand elsewhere? I don't know that it is not, it's certainly not for jobs as we know them today. Um, but it, I neither here nor there, because then what I was talking about with other people is you look at it in terms of demand side. So the way to think about this is what jobs Will there be where you are willing to pay a premium in order to have a human in that job? And the quintessential example is a sommelier. So if you don't know what a sommelier is, this is someone who is an expert on all wines around all the world. And they they, they work at fancy restaurants and they help you pair uh, wine. They help you pick a wine to go with your meal. Um, I've actually been to a restaurant just once as an adult that was fancy enough to have a sommelier. And that is the kind of thing that like, yeah, hypothetically, a robot could do, um, but you know that they don't have a sense of taste and they certainly don't have a subjective experience of, of wine that you do. Um, do we need a billion sommeliers? No, <laughs> right? And that's the kind of thing is like, is there going to be enough demand for those premium jobs to justify replacing all humans? Now, reading between the lines, Sam Altman has said many, many times in the past, like, we're going to revolutionize things. And, and I think he and others have been quoted as saying, like, you're going to have a lot more free time. What does he mean? Like, what does he mean when he says you're going to have a lot more free time? That means you're not going to have a job. Right. So anyways, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I wanted to get my thoughts out as soon as I finished watching this thing, because, you know, you guys know me like AGI, full autonomy, post labor economics. This is the kind of thing that I'm looking for and that I'm waiting for. And so I'm looking for the clues. I'm reading the tea leaves, you know, um, and and I would say that the biggest things that I saw, just a quick recap before I uh, close out this video, the biggest things that I saw that are clues to that is one, they're going to they're going to work on instantiating agents as fast as you possibly can. And each of those agents is going to come baked in with their own memory, which is a really critical component, uh, you know, in terms of knowledge storage and then tool use. So you combine you know, the, the customizable nature of it, you can spin them up. They have data that they can refer to. They have tools and APIs that they can call. You're a, a long ways there because think of it this way, build a robot or a peripheral that has an API call, you know, use Zapier to automate your home or whatever, or, you know, build a robot Butler, right? Like once you get to the API level where these, these agents can direct themselves or direct other agents, cause this is, this is kind of where I'm going with this in terms of how to create autonomy is you actually, rather than creating a single autonomous entity, you create dozens, hundreds, thousands of agents, each with different personas or archetypes. And so then those, they all debate amongst themselves as we saw with chat dev. So chat dev, if you're not familiar, is a project where they basically created a software company with, you know, a, a few dozen agents. And each agent had a different personality. What if you give them the personalities of Captain Picard? What if you give them the personalities of, you know, King Solomon? 
and you give you have a whole bunch of agents that have these different personalities and those are the ones that are making moral ethical and mission oriented decisions in terms of what other agents to spin up so then you, we're very very close to having agents that create more agents and and set missions and supervise and have different roles um and so I think uh, I think the model of autonomy of AGI that we're going to be uh, moving towards very close is more like the Geth from Mass Effect, where each individual agent is actually relatively small. And so, like uh, Legion, the Geth that you get in Mass Effect, he actually has a hundred. He ha I think he said that he has more than a thousand agents running in the hardware platform. So I think uh, I think Mass Effect wins for being the most accurate way that uh, that AGI is going to be achieved. Um, because it's so much easier to just spin up a really small individualized agent that has its own little mission, its own little set of tools, and its own little memory. And so then it does one little thing, and then it can, you know, you know, you can have ephemeral agents. You can have permanent agents as well. But I think instantiating and deprovisioning agents um, is probably going to be the way that we achieve AGI. And then, you know, you'll have one aggregate interface, you know, like Alexa or whatever, um, that will be <laughs> kind of the, your your input, but it's going to be... Uh, many, many, many nodes uh, in the future. And and when I say many, I mean like your average enterprise is probably going to have a million agents this time next year uh, instantiated and, and destroyed um, on a daily basis. And so then you're talking about billions, if not hundreds of billions of agents being created and destroyed on a daily basis globally this time next year. Um, and But then who's creating the agents, right? You have one human who acts like an orchestrator who says, okay, I need software that does this. And then the system spins up a thousand agents to figure out what it is that you need to go test it. And then those thousand agents spin up another thousand agents each as they supervise all the things. And then once the software that you've requested or whatever, it doesn't even have to be software. This time next year, we could all have robots maybe. Um, and then, you know, the problem is solved. All the agents get deprovisioned. Some of the logs get stored in some master repository so that the, you know, the whole system can learn from it. That's really where I predict that we're going. And um, what many of you don't necessarily know is that uh, <laughs> this was what I did. I, I was a IT infrastructure. So setting up containers, creating automated pipelines, it's the same technology. Just you add the GPT engine into it, and now you've got a bunch of new capabilities. So anyways... Uh, real quick plug for my Patreon. We do have a private Discord server, which um, not everyone is into. We also have new exclusive content. So uh, both tiers have exclusive content that's given to them, uh, as well as channel members here on YouTube. So uh, yeah, if you want to jump on in, support me, get in on the community. If you're not into the community side, at least I've got some exclusive content where you get raw, unfiltered, and deep dives into various topics that I'm talking about. Uh, and yeah, I've also got two books that are coming out. Uh, my novel is pretty much done. Um, I just need a proofread pass, basically. Um, and then I'm going to get that uh, going. So either sign up on the free tier on Patreon or my Substack in order to, uh, links in the description, in order to get notified when that's ready for pre-order. And then my systems thinking book. So uh, about me, I, you know, successful IT career. What you might not know about me is I have a grand total of five weeks of college under my belt and two certifications, um, but I was able to build a six-figure career, and then I was able to become an expert in AI, and then I was able to become a, a, a famous YouTuber, right? So how did I do all of these things? How did I find success in everything that I did? I took a big step back and realized that it was systems thinking. So now I've got a systems thinking book coming out, um, and I'll probably do some systems thinking courses inside my Patreon. So if you're a subscriber, you'll get some uh, some unique training videos uh, related to systems thinking. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you, that you are as excited as I am about these developments. And um, yeah, so stay tuned. I think we're in for a very exciting 2024. Cheers.